Yes, hello. This is Chaplain Peter Palatin. Um, I was promised, um, and I have it uh, over and over from different people there that understood, like throughout the company. In other words, the town hall there, you consider it, you know, metaphorically a company. So you all know what's going on with each other because you all work together. For example, I was going through probate and still am. And so the question was, was I really the owner now of the property at 301? Uh, I don't have those records. Hold on just one moment. Through to the town clerk's office, they're the ones that have the records. Uh, it doesn't matter about the records. Just let me finish. What's your name, my dear? Sandra. Yes, Sandra. She can answer your question. Uh, it's not a question. It's a, um, I'm just letting you know that um, what you did is criminal. In other words, it's jail time. Sir, I did not do anything, so let me put your you your, co your corporation, you your corporation, you understand Sir, your corporation. Uh, corporation, your town hall, your company. It's a metaphor. Hello? Do you want to talk to the town clerk? Well, first I want to tell you what you did that you know, but you're, that's why you have so much anger, because you know you're all wrong. Yes, hello, tax collector. Um, as you know, this is Chaplain Peter Palpin. And, um, I you see how they treat us? It's obvious the guilt and filth. Hello, who is this? This is the collector's office. Yes, um, this is Chaplain Peter Palpin, as you probably know. And yep. I've been going through probate. You know what probate is? Yes, I know what probate is. And so probate is um, everybody there at, um, at that, uh, what do you want to call it? At that um, criminal company um, in Chapach at the town hall that hates the one only crown down here like never before. It's a set of the one only God Almighty score and a plate and obvious scientific evidence tour. So you try to take it on a me peach or a sweet tour disgusting, despicable, crass ways. In other words, I was promised in writing, I have it from people I've spoken to, to show the court. And also people I've spoken to like you, and everyone understood that I had money in my brother's bank, but the probate people didn't want me to get the money out. And I was telling the tax people, you all work together. And so you know my brother has the money in the bank, so why not give me the paperwork I need to go to the bank to get you your money for your taxes, because you want your tax money. But that's not what you wanted. You just wanted to try to cause me mental and financial anguish, obviously. So then when you all knew that I was gonna about to get the money and I was waiting <clears throat> to receive the uh, death certificate, in other words, I was going two ways because I knew how despicable and diabolical you all were. So I was having an agent over there named Chris call um, every day or every week. Um, uh, can I come in and pick up the death certificate and the other paperwork so I could get um, clear this money through Peter's bank? And then I also had a woman over there, um, I forget her name, um, but she um, sent me a death certificate in the mail weeks ago and I asked her, this is an emergency. I want to get the money paid and get this out of my head, um, this mental and financial anguish. So can't you just Federal Express me the um, death certificate so I could go right over to the bank in Montpelier and they could send the money to your tax people immediately and expediently? Oh, don't worry about it. We all understand what's going on. We could wait. Um, there's no big rush. And the um, 2020 taxes, you don't have to pay till August. And I also have that in writing as well, by Chris, my agent, because I spoke to her last night and I wanted to find out what she was told and what she knew. And, she's, and she told me, oh yeah, they said, don't worry, um, the second payment um, of 2020 isn't done owed um, till the end of August. So we, we're not in a rush, we have plenty of time. And then because of so much insane jealousy for me, P.D. Sweetie, your tax corruption people over there, sold it to the ugly, smuggly, fugly people who bought the uh, 
the the tax lien of eight hundred dollars. Oh, <laughs> we this this guy owes us eight hundred dollars. Let's give him a hard time because if we sell it at the tax sale, then he has to pay five thousand dollars instead of eight hundred dollars. Let's screw his brother too, because we hate him because he's the skin that God jumps in with blatant scientific evidence all the way from heaven. But that's not why we hate him so much. It's more because of his humanly impossible skin tone and bone tone and organ tone sent all the way from home. And so this is the story what's going on there. And so what do you have to say for it? I'm not saying anything else. I've explained to you and you just don't... Go I ahead, explain. You. explain. you knew that I was going through probate and you were the one who promised me it, from the very beginning, don't worry, I understand you're going through probate. It's obvious you have the money in your brother's bank. We'll wait till you get it out, and then we'll take care of the taxes. And you don't have to pay the uh, 2020 taxes till August. Yes, yeah. and you said you have it paid by mid-September. I realized you couldn't get through, pro through probate by then, but I, that's out of my hand. No, it's not. You said you understood. You go, don't worry, we'll just extend it and extend it until you're done with probate, getting the money out of the bank. You all knew that I was getting the money out of the bank, and you didn't even call me and tell me you were gonna do this disgusting, diabolical thing, because you knew. Oh, you couldn't get the number, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, she couldn't get the number. They, they have my number, they have my email address, they have everything. Oh, she couldn't walk over to, what? No, I don't want to know about the property. I'm getting this on video because I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to the highest court. I don't have to care if I go to the Supreme Court. This has to do with um, you cognitively chose to try to um, cause me mental and financial anguish. That's against the no, law, I, lady. I That's against the law. Well, we'll let the courts decide about that. Well, we'll let the courts and I spoke to and I spoke to that guy last night, um, the head of... Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so he might, he's probably in cahoots with you and playing good cop, bad cop, but we'll see how he wants to play this. But I'm going to play it out until the end, and if the black ball ascends and I'm instant millionaire any day now, then you're all going to really cry because then I'm going to have um, the biggest attorneys in the country who are God Almighty lovers, and I'll be suing you for millions and millions of dollars. And, and you, you know that... Be, what I wanted to do to my brother's um, house. In other words, you want to sell it to some other people when I'm going to turn it into a museum and a dog park and people are going to come from around the world to see my church, the most important church and building in the history of the planet, obviously, because God rebuilt it in a humanly impossible way and filleted through my hands in his one only command, not demand. But he's down here demanding all war should be against the law and all pollution should be against well, the law. I'm going to have to uh, let you go right now. No, you're not, because I'm not finished with you. Well, I'm sorry. You want, I you want to hang up on me again? Are you embarrassed about all this? I have tried to explain to you. Are you embarrassed about all this? Why, you said, is that a good excuse, ladies and gentlemen of the jury? She said she couldn't get my phone number. She said she couldn't call me. Adam, this is Peter. Peter, how are you doing? Good, did you talk to that tax lady? Let me ask you again. Let me ask you. Did you talk to anyone in her office today? I have not. I've been at my desk uh, working on the school budget. Okay. Well, I recorded her, and she so she's lying. So I caught her in another lie because she said she spoke with you today. So now she. No, she did. No, I'm sorry. I did speak with her briefly this morning, but did I did I get into the substance of? No, we didn't have a substantive conversation. I left. I. Jay talked over this morning to pick up something off the fax machine, and I said, oh, I need to come see you later about uh, Mr. Paul. So I wanted to give it a heads up that she needs to pull any information. She well, she, well her story is different than that. She said way in detail about it. And then um, the other thing is um, I have her admitting, I mean, she, what do you think of this? She, she promised me from the beginning, and I have it, she knew I was going through probate, and she knew, all of you knew there that the money was in my brother's bank and still is, $4,000. So that's what it, what it took care of, the taxes on, on her end. 
but she didn't want me. She wanted to try to cause me cognitively, mental and financial anguish. Let me ask you a question. I asked her, um, why don't you call me um, or email me and contact me about this? Because you know, you knew you promised me and Jean it, it, it told uh, my agent and I have it in writing. Um, she told me yesterday in writing because I was talking to her in writing, not on the, on the, over the phone. And she said, oh, don't worry, Jean told me, she goes, Jean told me, because she was um, calling Jean like every day, you know, to get the paperwork to go to uh, the, the bank, to get the money out of the bank to pay you guys. You understand? So um, um, it, she goes, and Peter doesn't have to pay the, August, the other taxes till August. You know, to, we, we, and I go, when, last August? And she goes, no, this, the next August. So in other words, then when I come home from Dominican Republic, I would have been able to rent my brother's um, house on Airbnb easy and had the money no problem and argued about the, uh, you know, that thing we were discussing yesterday. But now um, there's all these extra payments and all this stress and aggravation. So you guys appear to have won and got your way and caused me extreme mental and financial anguish and depression. And, and so then my brother's house is going to get lost to some people. And, um, and then you're going to, but you don't care. You're going to lose millions and millions of dollars because once we hit the worldwide TV, I told you that people are going to come around the world to go to Chapache to see that um, place. And so then I told you about the ice cream shop, and if I, and if you want, I'll play you later. Uh, I called the ice cream shop and because, hello, how are you? May I speak with Mark, please? Mark parked in the dark, the one who stole money from my brother. In other words, owes my brother tens of thousands of dollars for all the work he did at that place, that beautiful place. And she goes, is this Peter Palpin? And I go, yeah. And then I started talking regular, and God started not teasing through me. And then, um. And, and she was, uh, appeared to be nice like you were yesterday, appeared to be, but you know, people could act. But um, she, um, she was devastated, like uh, watching a movie when you find out your husband did, did a crime, which will get me, when I go to court, I'll win the whole um, ice cream shop because he deliberately, I have him on video, I called him, he goes, I don't even know who David Paul is. And my brother built the whole place and he only paid him $25 an hour with the agreement he would pay him the rest of the money, $50 an hour, and even that was like a... Peter, I, I don't know anything about the ice cream shop. I'm okay, but it's a metaphor for what you guys did. It's a plan to try to hurt me and my brother. You know what I mean? In other words, you all, everyone at your company, and it's a metaphor, your, your company, your town hall knew that I had the money in that bank. And then when you all knew that I had all the paperwork and everything was ready, even Jean had sent me the death certificate and I asked her, but I didn't record it. What? What? If you had the money in the bank, why didn't you? Why because you I needed the, the bank wouldn't give me it until I showed the death certificate and the paperwork that said that I was the executor and all that. And, um, and, and, I, and you guys weren't giving it to me. I wasn't, I was waiting for it. So I had an agent over there and she was calling you guys every day for it. And then I had Jean sent me the death certificate in the mail and she goes, and I go, why can't you send it overnight? I'll pay for the FedEx. And she goes, I can't do that. And I go, why can't you guys do that? You can't put it in the mail, it's an emergency. They want the tax. She goes, don't worry about it. We understand about that tax and all that. We know you have the money, just stop sending it regular mail. That didn't come till yesterday. She sent it, um, the, the, the lady who, who got it for me said it was mailed on the 26th of October. And so, I, and so I'll be able to show in court, ladies and gentlemen of the jury and your honor, look at these people have tried to just cause me mental and financial anguish. And then I have the lady at, the, at your tax office today going, oh, I couldn't find your phone number and I don't know your email address, so that's why I didn't call you. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury and your honor, have you ever heard of a more disgusting, despicable, deplorable, horrible, immorable excuse to that? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury! This town hall has done nothing but try to cause Peter mental and financial anguish the entire time. Netting a mob, rent the house, losing tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, of the jury! Do you see what's going on here? 
Do you see what's going on here? And ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you all know that he's the skin that God jumps in with blatant scientific evidence all the way from heaven because he was the nicest, kindest human being for 12 lifetimes in a row. And when people hear this, they talk over because they can't stand to hear the greatest scientific evidence news that God is channeling and paneling through the skin of sweeter Peter Palpin, the nicest human being in the history and her story of this God forsaken world. And so ladies and gentlemen of the jury, what was Peter trying to do from the first day when he got the worst news in the history of his life? Who are the two closest human beings in the history of the planet? That from when the day they were born, they were together the whole time. And they opened a gym together, and they went to college together, and they did movies together, and they did rap songs together, and they did the movie Face Street Corner Tavern about the most unbelievable, incredible, beyond surreal true story in the history of the world, funded by the Darnells, Chris Darnell, who graduated at the top of his class in Yale and Harvard, who donated First Love Congregational Church to Peter Palpin. And then they funded Face Street Corner Tavern, the movie about God down here in our modern day, channeling with blatant scientific evidence through the chaplain, Peter Sweeter Palpin. And so look how they treated him. Look how they treated him. They treat him like a criminal and pretend that he's crazy and nuts. Are you starting to get the picture here? Hung up, call up. No, just tell him to call Chaplain Peter Palpin, and no matter how surreal it is, the one and only God okay, Almighty. Message. Can you repeat that message? Uh, he's gonna call us. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, give, I'll give him the message. I'd like you to repeat it, please, because this is I'm recording this for court to show that you. Yes, is this Adam? Yes, it's Adam. Peter, let me start before you get started here. I'm happy to talk to you. I'm happy to help you. And you'll get all of my effort. But if you're going to accuse me of being part of some sort of conspiracy here in the town, I, or and screw me on the phone, I, you're going to lose any of the support that you may be getting from me. Okay, but first, all right, yeah, but that wasn't me screaming. That was the light. That's how angry he gets. But he doesn't get so angry that he burns anybody like your man God for Jesus for saying doo-doo and pee-pee. He just gives people bad mad sad lifetimes. And so he does get angry because he, on, he knows what's going on. So I'm on a different phone. Let me transfer you to my office. Can I do that? Hang yeah. On right here, okay. I live by principle. So in other words, if you, I, I, it doesn't matter. I'd rather lose that house than have to pay all these extra fees and everything when, when, when it's, when, I've been told the whole time from the beginning, don't worry, we understand, you know, you're going through probate, the money's in the bank. And then everybody knew I was waiting for the paperwork from you guys to go to the bank and get the money. And I, and I, was, and I hurried it up so that not only did I have that going on in Rhode Island, but I opened another citizen's bank in the meantime in, in Montpelier to see what was gonna work faster. The, the agent getting the paperwork in, that I had in Rhode Island or them sending me the paperwork to um to me in Montpelier, I mean to and me in um in um in Randolph, Vermont, but the office is in Montpelier, thirty minutes away, and so I opened a bank account in a I um I INS account or whatever it is, it's for um yeah. you know to to do all this paperwork and get you guys your money, and and the whole time every time I kept saying, look, why why don't you guys hurry up, up and get me through a probate because all you want is your money, your tax money. So it's a, a catch-22. You, you, you want your tax money, but then you don't want me to get through probate, and you want to pretend that I'm not really not the one who David left the house to. And so it was a catch-22. I, I don't know that anybody's trying to keep you from All right, well, this is what's been going on the whole time. I record everything. Pete, I follow you. Listen, that I, when we spoke yesterday, the way we ended the conversation, I said I needed a day or so to get back to you. I hadn't been to 24 hours yet. I only just briefly spoke with Jane this morning. 
letting her know I'd be by later on today so we could discuss this matter, giving her the heads up so she could pull records she has. I gotta go down, I wanna talk to the building and zoning, I wanna talk to the assessor's office, I want to do a full investigation to get an understanding of all these facts. I'm being brought in towards the end here. All right, but do you understand my facts? In other words, I have, like, I, I could send you, um, I spoke to my agent yesterday, but not like this, like, on a, um, you know, message to message, you know, when you, when you type, right? And she told me, she got, she, she's been calling, uh, what's her name, like, for weeks about, uh, you know, coming there to pick up the paperwork to bring it to the bank, and that lady doesn't call her back. And then, um, what, what, what is, uh, what is your agent's name? Just so I can put, I can, I'm taking notes here just so I can yeah. connect all of this. Who is your agent? Cr Cr phone? Chris, I could give you a phone number if you want. Chris is her name? Yeah. I just want to make sure I'm, I'm hearing you correctly. Chris. Yeah. Okay. And, and so, um, and she, she wrote me yesterday and she goes, and Peter, I, I forgot the lady's name at the uh, front desk there that, you know, um, Jean, she goes, Peter, Jean told me that, um, you know, you don't have to pay the, the that other money till August, like I said to you. Yeah, I, look how stressed out I am about this. Like, you think I deserve to have to go through this stress when I when I was promised I was promised by your offices. In other words, it's different offices, but you guys are a team. You all work together, so you all everyone knew that 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 I I had the money and it was not a problem. And I and I asked Jean, I begged her, I go, let, I go send it Federal Express. I'll pay for it. And she wouldn't do it, you know? And then I would have had it when I was in Vermont and I could have drove it there myself, but I got a lady to drive it there. So I wasn't worried about it because it was all agreed. Everybody knew I was gonna get the money. And then when I started talking to these sharks, you know, that got the house for $800. In other words, this is the way the light is. Like they got the house for $800. You know, the, um, they, my brother for sure wasn't told about that tax because he would have paid, he had the money to pay $800. He probably he, he probably didn't know what the fire tax was. He probably thought it was, so he didn't pay it. So it was only eight hundred dollars, and they sent it on tax sale. But the minute it goes to tax sale, you people know. Then all of a sudden, it goes to five thousand dollars, eight thousand dollars, because they add on all this other stuff. It, like I thought it was a the b biggest bullshit thing. So I called the, the guy. I got the guy's number. Um, through the internet and I who who paid for it and I go you paid eight hundred dollars for a door at my brother's house or something can I pay you back and, and he goes what are you talking about and I go well uh, you paid eight hundred dollars for they said it was a house but there's no way a town would sell somebody's house for eight hundred dollars no one would be that mean so you must have bought a door or a refrigerator or something and so then he goes talk to my attorney and he hung up on me so then I got he finally gave me his attorneys but of course I know it was the whole house and not the door, but there's something called about being, you know, um, pun and being sarcastic when something is so despicable, deplorable, and horrible, and diabolical. And so that lady, that lady that you went to talk to purposely did this. All right, you want me to play that lady telling me that um, she talked to, me, to you today and, that, um, and, she, uh, and she said I couldn't get your address and your phone number? I mean, what, what's a dumber excuse than that? In other words, they email me and they call me all the time. Every office there has my phone number and um, an email address. So when I, if, I if, if this goes to federal court and Supreme Court and all that, it, it, you know, for harassment and discrimination. I don't want that to happen. I don't want that to happen. If it's going, I don't want that to happen. I, let, me check, let me do my investigation here. All right. If there's something I can do to help you. All right, like I said, you sound like, you, all right. You sound you, you, okay. All right. To be honest, I thought you you sound heartfelt. I even have an email writing. I talked to you. I called Julie Darnell, the people who donated the church to me and funded Face Street Corner Tavern, and I said I talked to the head of finance, and he sounded sounded heartfelt and sounded like he was gonna want he wanted to do the right thing. But I, but you could be a good actor because I've were, I've experienced people like that. But then when that lady told me that she talked to you today, and then you told me you didn't talk to her, then you know, like, so what am I supposed to say? I, I, I made an error, I misrepresented that. I, didn't, I, I did not talk to her, we didn't have a substantive conversation. Jane was in, in my office for maybe a minute this morning. She brings over uh, financial information from the bank, drops it on my desk, and I said, by the way, I spoke with Mr. Palpin yesterday. I wanna have a conversation with you about that later on today. When you have a minute, if you have files on that, please pull it so we can review it. That way we're not wasting time later on, that's all. 
I'm like, well, talk to Gene. Talk to Gene, and that and Gene is is the been the main go between, and she knew, she look. She told my agent like, uh, Peter has no problem. He doesn't have to pay the the 2020 tax till August. But in other words, she knew the money was in the bank, and she sent me the paperwork to get the money. So that wasn't even a question about the four thousand dollars, and and I wasn't even supposed to know I had four thousand dollars in the bank. I got someone at the bank to finally tell me. I go, okay, you're not allowed to tell me how much money my brother has in the bank because you're pretending you don't know I'm who, I'm my brother's brother and that I got the house. So just tell me, um, does he have over three thousand dollars? And the lady said yes. So I so I knew, or I said four thousand dollars. So the lady said yes. So then, uh, then eventually I found out. Oh yeah, and then I ended up finding a, a paper in my brother's um. It was all wet and everything, but it was in the mailbox, and, it, and I saw that he had four thousand dollars, four thousand something. So that was going to pay the eight hundred dollars. That I thought that's all it was going to be, plus a little to pay a couple hundred in attorney's fees. And um, and no one was honest to me about that either. In other words, if I knew that I only had a year to do the eight hundred dollar one, because that <clears throat> that in other words, if I had, if I had known two months ago that um. That on that date I could have, um, you know, paid the eight hundred dollars because I had eight hundred dollars. Um, I could have paid the, them in your office right there, and then I wouldn't have to have all these five thousand dollars worth of charges. <laughs> so it's all like people holding back information from me. In other words, you're not stupid. You see what's go going on. It's not fair to me. You know, like it's not. It's like you said in principle, like. Put yourself in my shoes. What am I supposed to do? Not trust what you all have been telling me from the beginning? You know? Not to worry about it? Let me check this out, Peter. If I can help you in any possible way, I will do that. All right? Okay, if even I'm talk to the judge. Even talk to the probate judge. She knew this, too. All right. And they're all going to tell you that... They're all going to tell you that I'm nuts and I'm crazy because... Uh, All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, you'll see that all I've been doing, trying the whole time to like be able to rent the house to pay you taxes. You know, like I, I offered them. I have it in writing. I go, look, let's go in partners. We'll, I'll, we'll rent the place out, and you could be my business partner, and you could get half the money, and I'll get half the money. You know what I mean? That I, I've been tr doing everything I can. They just, you know, they, we're holding the paper back so I couldn't get the money out of the taxes. I mean, out of the bank. All right, thanks. All right, thanks. Bye.